folks, uh, this is Arvind Kanchi, a member of the WC and the World Congress of Nephrology social media team uh, organized by the International Society of Nephrology. And we have this uh, interesting series of uh, speaker interviews for you, uh, speakers at the World Congress of Nephrology. Now, before I go into this, I must uh, ask you folks to register for the conference. This is going to be a feast of nephrology coming up next month in Kuala Lumpur, mostly virtual. Uh, registration is on. Do visit the WC and the World Congress of Nephrology conference page and please do register for the conference. Uh, back to the speaker interviews. Uh, here I have Dr. Abhilash Koratala. Uh, Abhilash is a good friend of mine. He has already been on webinars with the ISN and uh, he has a huge uh, following on Twitter uh, with his POCUS. Uh, POCUS is a point of care ultrasound and it is a very interesting topic that's come up a lot these days in nephrology and other uh, clinical uh, subjects in medicine. Dr. Abhilash Koratala is an assistant professor of medicine and the director of clinical imaging division of nephrology at the Medical College of Wisconsin. He's done a lot of work in uh, uh, setting up websites and tutorials on POCUS, which is uh, point of care ultrasound. And it's going to be uh, very interesting to talk to him today. Welcome to the interview, Dr. Abhilash. Thank you. Thanks for the kind introduction, Dr. Kanchi. It's nice to be uh, with you and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So Abhilash, you are a practicing nephrologist, obviously. How do you find time? What drove you? How did you get into POCUS or uh, point of care ultrasound as a, a, a speciality? It is a niche area. And how, how, how do you overlap your work as a nephrologist compared to imaging? How, how, how do you do that? So I think the important point here is that point of care ultrasonography is a component of nephrology practice. It should not be viewed as a separate imaging entity. Um, and I'm, a, I'm an academic nephrologist. So some of my time is allotted to uh, improving education or uh, publication activity or research activity in addition to clinical activities. Um, when I was a fellow at the University of Florida, that's when point of care ultrasonography picked my interest. Initially it was kidney ultrasound and then I soon realized it's, it's much more than kidney ultrasound. And as nephrologists, we deal with uh, fluid and electrolyte disorders on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, there are critical care uh, physicians and emergency medicine physicians who are already using point of care ultrasound um, in their uh, routine practice. And so why can't we do that? So that, that's where all this uh, interest uh, stemmed from. And, and now, now we are here and uh, educating other people and stuff. So basically the answer to that, simple answer to that question is that it, the focus is a component of uh, our practice rather than an individual entity. So in your practice, in uh, let us say in your experience or in your hospital, uh, if you're using focus for certain areas, what are those three most important areas where you're called in to do focus time and again? So generally, um, it's, it's assessment of fluid status or more precisely assessment of hemodynamic status at the bedside, whether the patient is in the intensive care unit or um, on the general medicine floor where nephrology is consulted, or it could be in the clinic. I have a special clinic called cardiorenal clinic where I take care of patients who have simultaneous cardiac and uh, renal dysfunction, where the primary uh, role of nephrologist is to assess various clinical and laboratory parameters and adjust diuretics most of the time. And with addition of focus, we can enhance our physical examination to be able to do that more objectively. And focus is not in isolation, but in addition to our clinical acumen and rest of the data. So essentially in, in, in all the practice settings where, where we go to, and that also includes hemodialysis unit and peritoneal dialysis unit. So at all these places, wherever you need, you need to enhance your physical examination to objectively assess volume status. That's where focus is useful. Excellent. You are speaking on uh, volume status in ESKD patients in your talk at the World Congress of Nephrology. Give us a glimpse into what you're going to speak on. Is it 
something to do with curly B lines? Is it something to do with the inferior vena cava? What do you exactly do here? Right. So um, when they invited me for the talk, they um, initially wanted me to talk more about lung ultrasound because with the, with the uh, recent data coming up in hemodialysis patients on lung ultrasound and um, looking at the outcomes when using lung ultrasound, um, there is so much interest among nephrologists to use this modality um, in hemodialysis patients. And also uh, it's relatively easy to perform compared to other sonographic applications such as um, uh, focused cardiac ultrasound or, or even inferior vena cava. Lung ultrasound is relatively, um, I mean, technically easier and also easy to interpret because you cannot see lung uh, on ultrasound unless it's consolidated. So all you do is interpretation of artifacts that is looking at horizontal A lines and vertical B lines. So um, in this talk, I'll give a brief overview of how it is like performing lung ultrasound, um, the brief technical aspects and uh, interpretation, what are the common things um, sonographic uh, uh, findings that you would encounter while assessing volume status. And, and at the end, I'll, I'll give a brief uh, overview of other things that we should incorporate because an isolated parameter is, uh, has always limitations, uh, whether it's a laboratory parameter or, or a physical examination finding over reliance on uh, one single parameter is obviously error prone. So we need to include other sonographic parameters in addition to lung ultrasound. So that's how my talk uh, goes. Now, about a person who is interested in POCUS, how does he go about getting into POCUS? Is there a sort of a, a certificate training course? Uh, is there a sort of a diploma in POCUS? How does, uh, let us say, a practicing nephrologist in the U.S., how does he get into POCUS? In the U.S., I would assume it's a little better in general because uh, um, we have several things. First of all, if you're, I mean, you said practicing nephrologist, but uh, assuming, say, you're talking about a fellow who is about to graduate, there are one-year fellowships offered in point of care ultrasonography, primarily uh, offered by emergency medicine programs. But if you're already a practicing nephrologist, there are several um, courses organized at the national level by various internal medicine uh, um, professional societies where you can take part as a longitudinal uh, curriculum and obtain certification at the end. Uh, Nephro there is no nephrology specific certification at this time, but uh, uh, we are working on that. We are currently drafting some recommendations from American Society of Diagnostic and Interventional Nephrology. Hopefully um, in the next few months, maybe in the four next four to six months, we'll have some guidelines coming out. And if you are interested in uh, advanced applications such as Doppler echocardiography, National Board of Echocardiography administers a critical care echocardiography exam, which uh, anybody can take, like I did. So um, but at, at this time, it's more of a piecemeal kind of thing. You, you, um, you rely on other specialty certifications and uh, at the institution level, you take help from uh, um, other specialties that practice focus, such as emergency medicine and critical care uh, till, till you develop your own um, focus curriculum in nephrology. That's excellent. What are the current areas of research that you're looking into using point of care ultrasound? It's, it's um, primarily, again, volume status assessment. And volume status assessment is uh, a more comprehensive exam. So far, the research has concentrated more on, uh, on one particular parameter, it, whether it's focused cardiac ultrasound or, or just the, looking at the inferior vena cava, uh, collapsibility or, or lung ultrasound, for example, in hemodialysis patients. So instead of looking at one particular organ, we should look at the hemodynamic circuit as a whole and each and every component is indispensable. And uh, the latest uh, development is VEXUS or venous excess ultrasound, which lets us use Doppler ultrasonography to look at venous congestion in heart failure patients, which is very important, not only in heart failure, but in any volume overloaded patients because venous congestion impairs renal perfusion. So it's more of a holistic comprehensive approach of using multi-parameter point of care ultrasonography um, and interpreting that in the right clinical context in, in along with maybe biomarkers such as newer things, such as ProBNP, not ProBNP is old, but CA125 is relatively new in the assessment of venous congestion. So 
grouping all these things together and interpreting that, that's that's a new uh, research area that's where focus is going excellent dr abilash koratala uh, it was a pleasure having you on this interview uh, i wish to thank the international society of nephrology as well as uh, uh, fernanda in particular for organizing this uh, thank you once again and i wish to tell all viewers do register for the conference you can listen listen to abilash on volume status in eskd patients during the conference it's going to be really excellent thank you thank you dr kanchi and it's a pleasure to be here